What's up guys, this episode we're talking about how to add recurring events into the simple calendar UI and how to create them, how to save them in the database, and how to display them. Now, this feature seems simple as a human being, right? You have an event, you wanna tell it to recur every single Tuesday, and so when you display a calendar, it should just display one every Tuesday, right? Well, it's not really that simple. What we need to do is we need to figure out how to store the rules in the database, how to pull the rules out, how to calculate those rules based on the days that we wanna display on the calendar, and then how to take those events and then put them in the calendar. So there's a lot to it, and that's not to mention all the exceptions that you might wanna add into those. So maybe you do a um, every Monday meeting, but then there's a holiday and you wanna delete that meeting for that one day, not the entire recurring thing. You wanna just put an exception for the one day. What do you do? So these two episodes, we're gonna cover that. We're gonna be using the Ice Cube Gem. This lets you define rules for recurring events and we'll use that in order to generate the events for the calendar. We're also gonna use Recurring Select. This gem allows us to create a select box where we can say set the schedule and it pops up a little modal. We can choose that we want a weekly event from Monday and Friday every single week. Hit OK and that will save it into our database. So there's a lot going on here so let's just get started with the code. So let's create a new Rails app. Let's call it recurring events and we can cd into recurring events and open up our gem file and let's go to the bottom and say gem simple calendar we want the latest version of that but we also want the latest version of recurring select this is going to give us that uh, select box with the modal but we need to add a github recurring select uh, fork so that it will be compatible with Rails 5. So Rundown app has forked it and made it compatible with Rails 5. So we'll go ahead and use that version. And we can run bundle to install this and that will give us both the calendar and recurring select depends on the ice cube gem so we automatically have that installed just by adding recurring select. So let's create our model for this. Let's generate a scaffold uh, named event. Each event's going to have a name. They'll also have a start time, so this will be for the one-time events, so we can um, add those to specific days and times. And then we'll have our recurring attributes in a text column, and this will be a serialized uh, hash that we'll save into the database and be able to reload and easily load into IceCube. Now that we've got our model, uh, we can run rake db migrate to set up our database, and we need to go and modify our form so that we can use that select. So rather than a text area for this, we want select recurring, and this will give us the option to add the recurring dropdown and the, uh, the modal for that but we can also pass a nil and then allow blank as true, and this is gonna give us the ability for us to clear out a schedule that was already added. So if we wanted to edit, we could actually make it a one-time event instead. So we'll add that, and we can load this up in our Rails server and check it out. Our application is gonna have both those one-time events, so I'll say one-time event, and we'll create that for right now, and then we'll also have our event for recurring event, and this should set the schedule. So let's make sure that this works, and it doesn't quite work because we need to add our application.js to require recurring select, and we also need our application.css to also require recurring select. So now if we refresh this and we try our set schedule, we'll get the JavaScript and the CSS for it and we can choose our days and recurring event will be saved. Now this time you'll see that it saves some data into the recurring uh, column and the other one, weirdly enough, saved the string of null. And that's because it's serializing this JSON and it's sending it over and saving it in that column. 
And we need to actually be able to parse this out. Rather than using the JSON, we want to just save this in our own serialized column. So what we'll do is we'll override the setter for the recurring column, and we'll parse that out into a hash if it's a valid recurring rule, and if it's not, we'll just save nil to it so that we don't have the string of null, we'll actually have nil in the database. Now we'll keep it consistent for us to query against. So let's open up the event model and let's serialize the recurring column to a hash. So we need to take the recurring equals method and override it. So when you assign a new value to it, we want to check to make sure if it's a valid rule from the recurring select gem. So we can say recurring select dot is valid rule question mark, and we can pass in the new value. And if it's not a valid rule, we can call super and pass in nil. So then if you didn't pass in a valid rule, we all go and clear it out. And if you did, we want to parse this and pass it into super so that we can send that to the database changes to be saved. So we need to parse this now from the JSON we sent over and use the recurring select gem to parse that. So how do we do that? The recurring select gem also has another method and we can call that by saying dirty hash to rule and we can pass in the value and we can call to hash on it in order to make it a hash format of the rule. So what this will do is this will take and parse the value and verify that it is accurate and then it will pass it in to the to hash function and that will then be saved to the database by calling super because we're overriding the recurring equals attribute method. This will call that original method and pass in the new value that we cleaned up. So that should save it to a hash in the database. If we save that and try this out again in the browser, we can now create a one-time event without the recurring stuff. And you'll see there's an actual empty Ruby hash here instead of the string of null. And if we create a recurring event and we set this to say weekly every Monday, we can create that event and you see symbols here instead of strings. So this is definitely in Ruby format instead of uh, JSON format. So that's a Ruby hash and that means that our conversions have been working. And now we can go work on taking those rules and converting them into events so that we can display them in the calendar. So the easiest place to start is probably to add that calendar in and get the one-time uh, events added to the calendar. So let's do that. Let's go and go into our index and let's say print out the month calendar with the events as at events, do day event, and let's add a div and a strong for printing out the day in long format. And then for each event, this should be plural, so events dot each do event. This should just be a div, print out the link to the event name and the event. Close the div, close the loop, close the calendar, and this should print out our events. Now, this doesn't actually know the difference between our one-time events and our recurring events, so we need to figure out how we want to handle that. So the way I'm going to handle this is we're going to create a new array called calendar events, and this will include all the one-time events plus all of the generated events for the recurring ones. We can go into our events controller, and we can create that array by saying calendar events equals at events dot flat map and we'll take each event and we will call a method that will create called calendar events and we'll pass in a start date so it knows the day that we want to make our calculations based off of. So for a month calendar we would want to go back to the beginning of the month and to the end of the month and we would want to grab all of those. So we'll use this in order to tell our um, our recurring events 
where we want to grab. So if there's any exceptions, it knows to remove those from that day and so on when we add that in the future. So let's say params.fetch start date. This is the name of the attribute when you click next or previous and that will set the day for the calendar so it knows how to calculate which month or which week or whatever view you're looking at. If there isn't one, let's set it to time.zone.now. Let's convert that to a date and close that up. So we have our fetch, we call that method, and now we need to create that method in our event model. So here's where we add our calendar events method and it will take that start date and we need to figure out how we populate this. And the first things first is if it's a one-time event, we wanna just return that one event. But if it's multiple events, we wanna return an array for that recurring one that might be daily or weekly or whatever the case. So if the recurring rules exist, we want to use those and IceCube to generate that array for our time frame. So here we can say, if recurring is empty, we just run want to return self because that is the one-time uh, events. And here we need to actually implement all of our IceCube code in order to pull all of that out. So we can make a couple helper methods like rule, and this will be our IceCube rule dot from hash. We can pass in recurring, and that's going to create a rule from IceCube and our form data that we passed over and then parsed using the recurring select gem. So now we have that, we can actually create a schedule and these schedules actually take a start date um, with IceCube. So here we can have schedule equals IceCube schedule.new and pass in that start. And our schedule can do a really simple thing by saying add recurring or recurrence rule and we'll pass in our rule and we return our schedule back. So this schedule is going to allow us to add in all of those rules that might be necessary. For example, we might have some exceptions and so we could put those exceptions in here as well as part of our call, but we don't have those yet. We'll talk about those in the future. And for now, we can do this. So now that we have our schedule, now that we've got our schedule, we can use it down here to generate that array of events. We can say start date equals start dot beginning of month dot beginning of week in order to grab the beginning of the month and then the beginning of that week for our calendar view. So if you're doing a week view or something like that, your calculation here would be a little bit different because it would need to calculate maybe just the beginning of the week, not the beginning of the month. So you can change that accordingly. And we'll have our end date, and this is similar. It will be the start dot beginning, or end of month rather, and end of week. And we'll have that, and we'll be able to call our schedule and pass in our start date. And we can have the occurrences, and this will generate our array of events. Um, this will just give us an array of date times back, or times, and we can take that and give it an end date so that it knows how many to calculate. So if we give it end date here, we can go through each of these and grab the date into a variable and create our new events and this should be a map instead of an each. We can create our new events by saying new. We'll give it the same ID as the one in the database. So this is just in memory. We're telling it to create a duplicate ID, but that's only because we're going to create this in memory and display it in the calendar. And so it will always link back to the same event. So rather than actually creating these in, in the database, we're going to create it in memory, but because we're putting the ID in here, when you generate that link to, it's always going to point to the exact same event. So this is our workaround in order to get those to display and interact with just as if they were regular old records, even though they're not. So we'll assign it the same name and you would want to assign all your other attributes that you might like in here. And we'll assign the start time to this to be that date. Now, one customization you might want to make is that if you want to put a specific time on here, you can go ahead and modify this date 
to take the start time out of the event. So you could say start time dot hours and you could assign that to the dates hours and the same thing for minutes so that if you wanted the user to create a record that happened at 9 a.m. every Monday, you could go ahead and take the original 9 a.m. and assign it to your new one in memory and that will go ahead and allow us to create our events. Refreshing our page, we get to see that all of our recurring events are being displayed on those Mondays. So our recurring event for the Monday rule is generating new recurring event lines in every day and the one-time event displays in the same correct place as well. That's pretty cool. Um, it looks like our links there are not correctly working, so let's go into the events index. And let's try changing this to event path and pass in event.id. So we'll explicitly set that ID. And because it wasn't persisted, that ID was not being added. So there we want to add event.id because this is not a permanent record in the database. So the link to said, let's not link it anywhere because it hasn't been saved yet. So by expressing this uh, specifically, we can go and create a link to that recurring event. So each of these recurring events will always point to event slash nine, and that is coming from those records that aren't actually saved. So this recurring event record here, that is number nine, is not actually really in the view. It's actually just the ones that are uh, created from our calendar events array. So this does, correctly set those up. If we wanted to create a new one that was maybe weekly every Tuesday, Thursday, we can add that, create it. Let's actually put a name on it, of course. Tuesday, Thursday um, meeting. We'll update the event and display that. And now we have it automatically on every Tuesday and Thursday. And if we change months of the calendar, you'll see that this actually includes those as well. And our one-time event only shows up in November because that is the day that it was supposed to be. This goes without saying, but your recurring events can get massively more complex if you wanna go add a bunch more features to this. I've implemented basically the bare minimum that you need. And one of the flaws with this is that what happens is that our recurring events happen all the way into the past and all the way into the future infinitely. So our event, even though we created it in November, actually goes back into the past as long as you can remember. So it's not likely that you wanna do that with your uh, views like that. You generally wanna say, when I create it, anytime in the future we wanna display it, but not everything in the past. And that's what Google Calendar does. So there's lots of other tweaks you can make like changing the schedule start to the one time that you typed in when you created that record. And changing that will allow us to say, well, it starts November 14th and it happens anytime into the future and no into the past. So that's nice for you to be able to customize and you can go as deep into this as you would like. So take a look at Ice Cube's schedule and its rules and how to query for those and learn about that because once you've got the rules in there, you can query this and make changes to it in order to get the output that you want in your views. So this loop is really simple. You just give it a start and an end and it will generate the occurrences between those days. Now there are a ton of changes you probably wanna to make to this for your specific application. You might wanna edit the controller so it queries for all the one-time events in that window, and then it finds all the recurring events that will be in that window as well. And so those are gonna be important for uh, doing a little bit of efficiency and only loading the events you need for the calendar view on that month or week or whatever it is. So it's up to you to make some of those tweaks, but this is a really good foundation to get you started on all of that. And I will be back next week with an addition to this to talk about adding exceptions. So we could have a recurring event into the future, but we remove, say, a holiday, um, and so we don't do maybe a meeting on the holiday. We'll talk about that in the next episode. Till then, I will talk to you later. Peace.